I'm going to review this Kiewitz ST120 pin style multimeter. This may sent to me no charge by Kiewitz for purpose of review. Let's check it out. Single cable, batteries. There it is. So you put the negative probe on the end and the tip is in there. It's also got the second tip. So it's CAT3 600 volts with the cover on and CAT2 600 volts with it off. Standard kind of thing. Manual, what's this thing do? Auto power off, frequency, capacitance, non-contact and live wire. Okay, so DC voltage, AC voltage, and it says measure voltage 0.8 volts to 600 volts. Resistance, continuity, capacitance, frequency, right? So those are things we can check. Let's put some batteries in first. Whilst I'm doing this, consider clicking the subscribe button and the bell icon as well, so you're notified about my future videos. If I can get this cover off. We got the QC sticker over the top. That was silly. The QC. Not very good quality from the QC. It is actually a QC. Okay, why does that not come out? I forgot to take the whole back off. Surely that was slide or something, wasn't it? Wow, that's a interesting fitment. I think it was just stuck. Okay, right. They're, they've not quite got their mouldings right on here. So it's got this little hooks on this end, which are supposed to hook inside there to hold the end on. But if you look at this end, see it's actually interfering with the end piece. See? So you can't lift it out. This end, you have to lift it this end, but it's interfering. You haven't got the moulders on right. Oops, that's bad by someone. Someone wasn't thinking about that when I designed that. Right, so I've got a big playlist of multimeter reviews. Make sure you check that playlist out. It'll be at the end of the video. I might stick a link down below or something as well in the description. And there will be links to Kiwitz in the description as well for this meter. It takes two AAA batteries. Put those in. It beeped. Put the cover back on. At least the cover doesn't come off too easy. We'll have to pull this apart again because we'll do the teardown at the end. I'll do all the testing. I'll put it on the calibrator. Put on my calibration references. We'll check out how good it is and that sort of stuff. And we'll see how it actually goes. Make sure you stick around and watch the rest of it when I do the actual calibration checks to check how accurate it is. So I looked at the manual briefly. You've got a cable here which came with it, obviously. Obviously it didn't come with it, but I don't know why have one. State the obvious, good on you Scott. Right. So, I'll stick this in here. So obviously this is meant for electrical and electricians. That's obviously the target. This is, you know, what this format is used for, working in power balls and stuff like that. Yeah. That switched fairly fast. No good for continuity though. Not in auto mode anyway. That's an auto mode right now. So we go through the various things. Auto mode, obviously. Let's push the function button again. Next one is DC volts. Let's quickly check DC volts. Let's get the... Uh, PDVS2 Mini here from Ian Johnston and we'll shove this in here and we'll see what we get. Let's pull the Pro covers off so we can do it. We'll see what he thinks of this. Yeah, the lighting's drowning I'm afraid. It's not the best for that. It's currently showing zero. So I do like the fact it's got manual functions on it so you can actually um, manually select the mode you want. So I do like that, that's good. So let's do one volt. Yep, that's fine. Um, let's actually go to 100 millivolts, see if we can read that, it can, it can read 100 millivolts, that's fine. That's kind of showing up there, you can see it there. Okay. 50, that's alright, so I can actually test those properly. So when I do the calibrator section of the video, we will be able to check a lot on this thing. This is also very accurate, because it's, you know, a reference, it's what it's meant to be for. So let's do 10 volts, oops, 10 volts, go all the way up. 10 volts, there we go, it's reading 10 volts, 10.04. Anyway, that's working. Next function. AC, we'll check that on the calibrator. Resistance, we'll check that on the calibrator as well. That's fairly fast. Continuity. That's actually really fast. That's good. Now, I actually want to measure that speed, but this is going to be complicated. So this is another tool which came from Ian Johnston. He designed this after seeing videos, probably my videos, testing multimeters and checking for continuity testing. So he's built this tester, which he sent to me, which is very generous of him. Let's try and get the lighting off it. Now the tricky thing is it's based on banana plugs, and obviously I don't have a banana plug this end, so I'm gonna to have to hold it on, and we'll see what we can get. So I need to adjust this until we find out what the timing is on this thing. 
for where it can or cannot find it. So I was going to increase the pulse time until we get consistent triggering. Thirteen milliseconds. So the pulse time thirty milliseconds is enough to trigger this thing. That's fairly fast, that's not too bad. It's not the fastest, but it's certainly not the slowest either. That's actually pretty good. For a budget meter especially. Well, let's see what the next function is. Diode test. Okay, does this beep? It does not beep. Which is a shame. It would actually be nice if this beeped. I mean it does respond fairly fast though. I'll try and get on the screen so you can see it. It's fairly fast response, it's not bad. But it would be nice if this beeped. Like if you got a, a diode junction, you're getting a drop of say less than one volt if it beeped. A lot of multimeters do that, and it's really good for doing non-visual testing. So if you're probing around a circuit and you just want to stick your meter probes on without looking away, you can just test it, test it in both directions, and if it beeps, you know it's probably okay. And if it beeps for a long time, you know it's a short, which is obviously not good. You know, having an, a buzzer which goes off at the same time is nice, but it unfortunately doesn't do that. Some meters do, some don't. Frequency, we're testing a calibrator. Capacitance, we can do that now. Oh, I check capacitance. Let's start with the 200 picofarad. Now, also, I've got to do this with the meter itself, so hopefully, I can get it so you can see the light on it. So, 200 picofarad, not showing up. 1 nanofarad, not showing up. 20 nanofarad, there we go. You can see 20 nanofarad. So, it's doing 19.2, so it's off by 80 counts. Yeah, okay. Let's check the microfarad. One microfarad, that's pretty quick. One count out. Don't even see it, can you? Um, that's actually pretty good. So, it's like below 20 nanofarad, it's pretty pointless. Let's see what the manual said. Well, it said plus or minus 4% with plus 5 counts. Hmm. Doesn't sound about minimum reading, though. Yeah, I don't know. I would say you should about measure one nanofarad on a range which is covered by that, wouldn't you? It is a nanofarad range. Let's stick it back in again. Yeah, nothing. It's like 20 nanofarads, the smallest you can do. Realised I didn't discover these buttons, did I? So, also got a power button, hold button, and then we've got a torch as well, so I guess you hold down, and that's the LED on the end, which comes in handy sometimes, trying to work somewhere in a panel or something like that. Okay, what's the next function? Live voltage detection. So this cable is live at 240 volts. Yep, that works. Let's turn the voltage down, see what it cuts out to. Sometimes there's two ranges. Like high and low, this one's counted on high. Oh, there's low there, hold on. So, comes on about 10 volts AC. And it's like it goes to high range at about 15 volts AC. Yeah. Okay, so that's that one. PA is phase detection. What it seems to do is you... I just triggered it by mistake there. Because I was touching it, detected it. So I think it synchronizes with the phase of the frequency you're measuring, right? So on a three-phase system, you've got three phases which are out of sync with each other by 120 degrees. So each phase is 120 degrees out from the other phases. So I think this synchronizes one phase, and then you stick on to the next phase, and it detects the synchronization, whether it's 120 degrees or 240 degrees out of phase. If it knows which one of those it is, then you can tell you if you've got your phase rotation correct or not. Pretty clever. Auto mode. Yeah, I don't like auto mode. <laughs> That's it, I think. Let's go and check this on a calibrator. So, to the calibrator. So here we are at the calibrator. I've got it set to auto mode. I've got it ready to do 100 microvolts. We'll see if it does anything. Turn it on. And it's detecting resistance. Okay, let's do 10 millivolts. Still doing resistance. 100 millivolts. Still doing resistance. And 1 volt, which is usually where it'll trip over onto voltage. It's not seeing it. It's not seeing 1 volt. Seriously? Hmm, okay. 10 volts. There we go. Now it's working. Hmm, that's not great. I don't like the auto mode on these things. I mean, they're convenient. But I don't like the auto mode because they're not reliable. I don't like them. Down to one volt now, it's detecting it. 
down to 100 millivolts. And that lost it. So I should mention there's a viewing angle on this thing. It's not great. Like above, it's useless. Below, it's really good. It seems like they always design their displays the same way. So on seeing the other bench meters, because they've got no tilting bow on them, you know, the actual handheld meters, um, there's only for you know sitting flat on the desk, and it's actually favourable to have it that way. But these, it's not. It's actually really bad. I don't like the displays on these. I just got the wrong viewing angle on them. You always have to be below the thing. Anyway, I'm on voltage now. Mainly changed the um, motor voltage. So doing 100 millivolts, and you can see it. 10 millivolts, you can see it. It's one count out. It's the one millivolt. I doubt it will show up. Yeah, one millivolt doesn't show up. Okay, one volt. One volt's four counts out. 10 volt is three counts out. 100 volts, three counts out. So this is changing ranges quite quickly. So that's pretty good. When they're in auto mode, they're rubbish. <laughs> that's my opinion anyway. Let's try high voltage. So 300 volts, eight counts out. 500, two counts out. Hmm, interesting, it gets better. 600 is the limit. So it warns you as well, it beeps to tell you it's over range. And that's two counts out. Try 200 volts, yeah. Five counts out. That's your worst at the bottom of the range. Interesting. Hmm. So I'm doing the AC range now, one millivolt, can't see it. 10 millivolts, can't see it. 100 millivolts. There we go, now we got it. 12 counts out though, at one kilohertz. It could be the frequency. We'll try doing frequency soon. One volt, two counts out, that's fine. 10 volts is six counts out. 100 volts. Wait for it to catch up, there we go, five counts out. Let's go down to a different voltage here. See, 300 volts. Just doing 300 volts now. Just waiting for it to catch up, there we go. It's 15 counts out, that's pretty significant. Let's do 500 volts. Three counts out, that's interesting. Let's go down to 200. It's 10 counts out. Hmm, bit erratic, it's not very linear. Alright, let's try it in frequency. Let's try it. 50 hertz, 1 millivolt, nothing. 10 millivolts, nothing. 100 millivolts, it's there. 12 counts out. 1 volt is 4 counts out. 10 volts is 1 count out. It's getting closer. 100 volts is bang on. And 300 volts, which is 15 counts out before. Two counts out. Seems it likes the lower frequency. Yeah, one count out, 200 volts. 500's bang on. 600. Two counts out. One count out. Right. Hmm, took a while to react, didn't it? Let's check frequency out. So I'm doing 50 hertz and it's showing up just fine. Bang on. 20 hertz. Yep, yeah, that's fine. So I'll see at 1 volt. 10 hertz, which is as low as I can go on this thing. That's fine. 10 kilohertz is fine. 100 kilohertz is fine. And 1 megahertz is fine. Just one count out. Let's check resistance. Turn the output on. 10.4, we're getting 10.4 six or so. Now I have a bit of a bodge connection here obviously because of the prototype so that may be causing us some slight issues there with the resistances. It will be causing a bit of resistance there. But as you get to the higher values it shouldn't really matter too much. So 100 ohms basically right is one count out. 1k is six counts out. 10k is six counts out. 100k is five counts out. 1 meg is 7 counts out, 10 meg is 5 or 6 counts out, and 100 meg you can't see. So if you like these review videos, make sure you click like, and also subscribe if it's your first time here and you haven't subscribed before. Let's pull this thing apart and see what's inside it. I'm guessing not much. Kyrie's 10 years a chip on a, well, a blob chip.
right? They tend to be what they use in their assemblies. So that's what I'm expecting to find. Oh, there's another screw here. I should probably take these batteries out too. Batteries out. Right. So the screws out. Uh, I think that end cap will stay there. Yep, there we go. Well, this is extremely similar to another one I just reviewed. I just did a review video for the ST100 and it looks almost identical. Well, it looks almost identical without doing a side-by-side -side comparison, but it looks really similar. Layouts are almost identical, chips the same, but the design looks very similar. Let's take the board out. So you have to take the screws out. There's five screws. This is attached like so, flip it over. The other board had the buzzer over here at this end. Where's your protection on this one? Oh, there we go, it's up this end. So there's nothing at this end, but it's all up here. So we've got a couple of PTCs, a couple of MELF resistors. There's a torch LED there. But it's like the other one, not a lot to see. It looks like it's basically the same designs, but it's been rearranged. It even has the same issue with the backlight thing dropping out the back behind the, <laughs> behind the display. This is just a zebra strip rubbers holding it on, so I have to be careful not to knock it off. A little relay in there, which I could hear clicking away before. Okay, not much to see in there. Let's put it back together. It's better than the ST100, mainly because you're not stuck to having to use an auto mode. The ST100 is stuck in auto mode, you can't do anything else for voltage and things like that on it. You have to use auto mode. This one here, at least you can do the manual modes and switch between voltage and other things, which means it's actually usable, it's much better. Input protection and stuff's two PTCs, that's all it's got. Um, not ideal, I mean this is targeting at high voltage work because of the form factor. This is targeting for high voltage stuff, and I'm not sure I'd want to use this on high voltage to be honest. I think if you're doing less than 100 volts, yeah, fine, I think you'd be alright. But other than that, I don't think it's a good idea. I can certainly see it's got a use, it's, you know, hobbyists will probably be fine with this. I mean, I'm much happier with this one than I was with the ST100, which is much, much slower to use because it's only got auto mode for the main functions. You can switch to some of the other ones like capacitor and stuff, but this has got manual modes for all of them, and that is just far better. You can actually see low voltages on it and that sort of stuff and you don't get tricked into reading the resistance like I showed. I'd recommend this one if the price is right and if you're a hobbyist and if you're not expecting too much. It's okay. I mean it's relatively fast. I mean continuously is fairly fast. That's quite good. It's better than the ST100. That's my, that's my summary. <laughs> if you've got a choice between the two, get the 120. So thanks a lot Kyrie for sending this to me. Make sure you click like and subscribe before you go. Check out the playlist over here which is the other Ultimate Reviews which I've got loads of. Place over here, YouTube thinks you should watch. There's a subscribe link here if you haven't done it already. And over here is a Patreon support link if you want to help support the channel. Two dollars a month, and I can use that money to help buy a bit of test gear and help me to make content for videos. Bye.